It's a very warm welcome to Altrincham Football Club for uh, uh, Dean Furman, all to his latest signing. Dean, welcome to the Jay Davidson Stadium. Uh, you were at Carlisle United last season. Here you are now at Altrincham. Um, what sort of happened in the meantime? How did uh, Altrincham come on the horizon? Yeah, first of all, thank you for the warm welcome. Uh, it's, it's great to be here. It's great to get the deal signed. Uh, and I'm looking forward to officially joining the lads on, on, on Thursday after a fantastic result the previous weekend. Um, for me, I was at Carlisle last year. I live in the area, so it couldn't be more different. I was travelling two hours there and back to Carlisle every day. Now I think the stadium is, I think, seven minutes from my house. Um, so it couldn't be more different coming coming over to uh, Altrincham for a game. And um, yeah, really, it was. It was I, my contract expired at, at Carlisle. There wasn't another offer. Um, I've had a few different trials and a few different offers over the summer. Nothing that really, really suited me. Um, I got in touch with, with the gaffer. Um, he offered me the opportunity to come down to training. Uh, been, went down to a few training sessions, uh, played in a game against Huddersfield a couple of weeks ago, and we had a good chat after that. Uh, and the gaffer's offered me a short-term deal. And um, hopefully my aim is to make that a, a much longer-term deal going forward. Sure, uh, and you know you've had those few training sessions, and you've you've had a a, a few minutes on the pitch at uh, Huddersfield. What, what are your early impressions of the club and the team, your teammates, style of play, etc.? Yeah, from from the very first session, I was really impressed. I looked at the squad. I looked at first of all the size of the squad, which is. Uh, particularly big squad um, I, and I saw a lot of quality um, and it's one thing doing it in training it's another thing taking it into a game so the Huddersfield game as much as it was an opportunity for me to showcase myself I was obviously having a look and, and seeing seeing what the rest of the team was about and I was really really impressed um, some very very accomplished players in the team uh, a big squad with lots of competition for places uh, I mean, I don't know exactly how many players there are, but it seems like there's a lot of players who are almost expecting to be in that starting eleven. So competition's great. Um, it, it mirrors what you see in, in, in the leagues above, where, where there's a big squads and, and huge competition for places, and that can only be healthy for the club. I was going to say, is that the sort of thing that keeps you on, on your toes as a player, knowing that you've got somebody breathing down your neck all the time? Absolutely. Healthy competition is vital. And I think what I've seen so far is that the lads are really going to drive each other on to make sure that they're, they're really on their A game. The gaffer's said a few words um, that have kind of left an impression on me and, and that you have to be on your A game in training and in matches in order to keep your place in the team. And that's something that is going to challenge the lads. There's going to be disappointment every week, but it's up to you as an individual to really put in the performances to, to make sure you're playing. We've signed a, a midfield player here. Now that could mean somebody who likes to put his foot in and break things up, or it could mean somebody who's a creative passer, or it could mean box to box, or somebody who's got a bit of everything. But what, what can we expect from Dean Furman? Um, generally, I've I've played a bit more, a bit deeper um, throughout my career. It's it's been a been a position that's come very naturally to me. Um, sitting in front of the back four, cleaning up, getting on the ball from the back four. Um, it's been something that I'm quite a disciplined player. So so that's been something that I've um, used to my advantage. Um, very vocal on the pitch, so uh, being in the middle of the park and, and kind of helping others around me is very important to me as well. So uh, that's a role that I've generally played throughout my career, but despite my age being being 33, still got a lot of energy to get up and down the pitch, and if that's what I'm instructed to do, if there's another player who plays particularly defensively, then then I'm, I'm also available to do that. And does the Alti approach of trying to build on the on the deck and pass it around and... and uh um, game uh, build momentum that way is that something that's sort of in keeping with your style of play i think it's i think it's refreshing um it's it's great to see that there's a philosophy it's great to see that that uh, the team want to get the ball down and play some attractive football i know it's not always possible uh, sometimes at, at some stage of the season the pitches don't really allow that or the the uh, conditions don't really allow that but the philosophy is to get the ball down and play um which is particularly encouraging for me because i want to get on the ball i want to play i want to pick the back of the ball up off the back four uh, get the ball moving and, and play through the lines and, and that's how I've played my best football throughout my career How much of that came from your early days? I know you came over from South Africa at five years old and quite soon after that you are at Chelsea under the tutelage of Brendan Rodgers at Chelsea's youth team did that sort of mould you, if you like, as that sort of midfield player? Very much. I mean, to be a 16-year-old going full-time uh, and to really learn your trade under, under the tutelage of, of Brendan Rodgers uh, couldn't have asked for a better uh, apprenticeship really he was absolutely incredible it's no surprise to see 
what he's done in his career today and, and the fantastic job that he's doing at Leicester. Um, it was also under the time where Jose Mourinho just took over the club and there was a real philosophy at the club um, under two systems, a 4-3-3 and a diamond. And, mm. and as a youth team, we worked on a similar kind of structure to the first team. But Brendan was, was massive for, for us as young lads coming through. He really taught us uh, the ins and outs of the game. The found he, he was really part of my foundation as a young footballer. So very, very lucky to to have had him for for a number of years as my manager. I mean, you often hear players saying a particular coach or a manager had a big effect on them. Um, but looking up from the outside, you try and visualise how that happened. Is there an example of you, you could give of what what he actually did to kind of help you develop the way you do? And was, was there a day on a training pitch where you sort of thought, oh, that, oh that's what. I'm supposed to do what that's what he means I think um, we were we were young boys at the time mm. uh, as 16 year olds and actually a lot of us moved away I was I grew, I grew up in London but I was too far away from the training ground so I lived close to the training ground and Brendan almost was a bit of a father figure to a lot of us mm. as well and, and he helped us he helped us grow up as well as men um, so that was something that he was great at but what I will say is on the football pitch his attention to detail was was very very impressive um, small things that maybe maybe people won't notice but your way to pass and and the side of the body that you pass the ball to it it, it you don't have to speak that says a lot um, in football terms in football language so he was he was incredible in, in just his attention to detail and, and how he just helped you with your game um, and also being in that environment being able to see the likes of John Terry Frank Lampard watching the very very best how they train how they look after themselves how they work in the gym uh, that kind of um, information as a young player was was invaluable you got the chance to do that did you you weren't keep kept completely separate from the senior players yeah at the time we, we, we it was it was just when uh, Abramovich came in and, and um, that the club really uh, went on to a whole new level um, but the the youth team was in the same kind of building or, or uh, Cobham training ground as the first team so whilst our training pitches were separate there were times where we'd come over and the first team were training we'd be able to watch their training sessions uh, the odd time you'd join in with their training sessions so uh, as a young boy as a 16 17 year old dreaming of a career in football it, it was the most incredible incredible start well thinking of that Jim and you would have had dreams of that age especially seeing the likes of Frank Lampard and, and co how difficult is it to cope with being told, well, actually, we're not keeping you on when you're maybe 18 years old and you're hoping to make it there. It's it's incredibly tough because really, up until that stage of life, you've never had any disappointment. Mm. You've never had someone tell you you're not good enough. You've you've maybe lost a few games, had suffered the odd injury here and there, but never has anyone said to you you're not good enough. So, when when Chelsea turn around and say, listen, there's no there's no pro contract for you here. Uh, we're letting you go it's it's very hard to take but what I will say is Chelsea were incredible with me finding uh, my next my next move um, they were instrumental in lining up an opportunity up at Glasgow mm. Rangers so by the time Chelsea had told me for certain that there wouldn't be another deal I already had an offer on the table from Glasgow Rangers so it wasn't as if I was kind of going out in, into uh, no man's land, so to speak. No. I, was, I was ready on my way up to Glasgow Rangers, uh, another massive club. Oh, and were you in any way prepared for the level of, of rivalry between the two big clubs up there? Not at all, not at all. And I learned very quickly, and not even from a first team game, from a youth team game when we came up against Celtic. It, it just had a different feel. It just, it just felt different. There was more to it, the build-up in the week, mm. um, the atmosphere, there was a bit more press, the fans... It, that was for a youth team under 18 game um, and then when you get to Ibrox um, or Parkhead and you actually get to experience it it's it's absolutely incredible well are you talking about the Scottish Youth Cup final at Hampden Park that was that was something very special Kick as off well delay 15 minutes just to get all the fans yeah I mean I mean at Hampden for a youth game there was I think there was between 10 and 15,000 there yeah. um, thankfully that night went fantastically well for us um, we won 5-0 and it, it, it was very very special to beat Celtic and, and that's so it, it you can see um, from a young age it's 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 in the players that rivalry is there um, and it's yeah, it's a fantastic rivalry and, and one that that if any football fan should try and experience. Five 0 and, and Dean Furman on the score sheet to boot. Not there was a, there was a nice goal for me there, which yeah. was extra special. My family had travelled up from London to come and watch the game. Um, so yeah, that that was a very special moment in in uh, a very successful team. And then you, you, a couple of years later, you, you've got contract offers from Rangers and from um, Bradford City, but you, you chose Oldham. 
but it, probably not a bad decision because you made what was it, 150 appearances and captain at 23 years old. Yeah, so I, I made my debut at, at Rangers towards the end of the season. I think I was 19 probably and um, I was all excited for the next season thinking this is going to be my big season and um, Rangers went ahead and signed Steve Davis and Pedro Mendes to go along with Charlie Adam, Barry Ferguson, Kevin Thompson. I mean, the, the, list, the list of incredible midfielders is endless and I very quickly realised that I wasn't going to get any football um, I end up on loan at Bradford City under Stuart McCall, who his mm. Rangers links. Mm. Uh, had a fantastic year at Bradford. Absolutely loved my year at Bradford, and, and Stuart wanted to sign me. Had an, had an offer to remain at, at uh, Glasgow Rangers as well. Um, but I did say to, to Stuart McCall that if, if a team in the league above comes in for me, then, then I would like to go as high as possible. And, and uh, for me, that was Oldham Athletic, and, and I had uh, a good few years over at Oldham. Yeah, and um, the, it was South Africa after that, wasn't it? I think uh, Dean to Super Sport United, and, and again, um, great success uh, and, and captain again. I mean, is this a side of your character? Do you like uh, leadership, responsibility, and ex exerting your opinions or, or making sure that players around you are doing what they're supposed to be doing? Yeah, very much. Um, South Africa was, has been an incredible journey. Like being born there, um, coming over from a young age. It wasn't something that I expected really to happen. My football was here, my family was here, uh, my life was here. Um, but when the national team came calling, it was an opportunity that that really excited me that I couldn't turn down. I thought, let me let me give it give it a go, give it my best shot. And uh, 56 caps later, it was it was something that that went very very well for me. Uh, the captaincy was an added bonus. It, it came along. Um, it, it was a very very special feeling to to lead out my country um especially going into an african cup of nations that that was extra special um and yeah it, it is something that that i suppose coaches have, have recognized in me that um it's probably uh, i like to like to think I'm, I'm a good professional um consistent in my performances and and, and behavior really and and um i think that is one of the reasons why managers have, have decided to give me the captain's armband at a few different opportunities yeah, and all those caps, if you go back to the first one, what a way to make your debut in Sao Paulo against Brazil. What, what sort of experience, an experience that must have been? Yeah, it was quite incredible. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm over here playing in, in League One with Oldham, and uh, next thing I'm playing against Neymar and David Luiz and um, Dani Alves in Brazil. So it was, it was strange. I always remember looking along the lineups and, and having a look at the Brazil team and thinking I'm in like a FIFA game. Mm. Uh, but again, as soon as the whistle goes, you, you get your head down, you get stuck into a few tackles. Um, and I absolutely loved it. I didn't expect to get on the pitch, if I'm honest with you. And then to find out I was starting the night before was a, a bit of a shock for me. But I just thought, let me let me give it everything and, and hope for the best. Did you leave your mark on Neymar? I did. There was a tackle on Neymar. Yes, uh, I've got a nice picture of it. That's that's. I'm not sure he remembers it, but I certainly remember it. Um, but yeah, it was, it was great. I came off in about the 80th minute. I think Hulk scored in the 85th minute. Yeah. They beat us 1-0. Um, and actually, we got applauded off the pitch by the Brazilian fans, which was a... a a, a fantastic feeling to show how well we had done in the game. He doesn't always take kindly to being tackled, Neymar. Did he not? Uh, I don't. I don't think a... I'm on his Christmas card list. Put it that way. <laughs> no. um, but yeah, I mean, what an experience! That, for, I've, I've been blessed to, to play um, to play for my national team, and, and with that comes some incredible fixtures. Yeah. I mean, a, across Africa, playing against the likes of Salah and Mane. Um, we've played Spain, who came back to South Africa the last time they were there. They had won the World Cup. They came for a, for a friendly uh, to play against Brazil a couple of times. So uh, the, the journey that I've been on with the national team has, has been absolutely fantastic and, and probably the highlight of my career. I mean, that, that Brazil team, I think, was struggling slightly by their uh, normal levels at, at that time. Um, but nevertheless, you, know, you, you, you see Neymar on television and you think, wow, what, what was it like close, close up as a, a player? What, what, did he stand out? Um, not really? I would, so, so I was lucky, to, or maybe unlucky, to play them twice. Mm -hmm. um, the first game, may, maybe if, if you had to ask him if he remembers it, I don't think it was his greatest performance. We then played them before the, one of the World Cups, I can't remember which one, and he was absolutely incredible. He was just on another planet. There was, uh, there was a moment I do remember that he was in a corner and there was absolutely no way out of it. There was probably three players surrounding him and the next minute he was gone. With a trick. So, with a trick, so quick, so sharp, so imaginative. Um, and it's, it's only really when you come up against someone that you can truly appreciate just how good they are. And yeah, it's no surprise why he is, he is one of the world's best. At club level in South Africa, um, 
Dean, you, um, with Sunsport United, you, you, you won lots of things there, but was it on the same level as here? I mean, here, if you won trophy after trophy with a, one of the top clubs, that there'd be you know, lots of attention. Was it, was it on the same level in South Africa, or, or, yeah. or, do, or does it trail behind rugby and cricket? Very yeah. much, very much. It's, it's, it's very, very popular. Um, if you think of how the top leagues are here, you've got match of the day, you've mm. got uh, you've got all the sponsors, you've got TV, um, and that's very much how the top league was there. Plus, you add into that you're a national team player. Uh, there's a lot of scrutiny. You turn the radio on, they're talking about it. You turn the TV on, there's program after program analysing the team's performance, your performance. Uh, you walk down the street, and someone's going to ask you why you did this or about your goal or about losing on the weekend so you can never get away from it mm. you can never escape it um which can be great when when you're on when you're in good form and and you might want to hide when you've not had the best game because uh, you get a lot of attention yeah, but true. amazing experience really fantastic it was something that that um came at a, at a stage in my career it just was the right time to go and try something different and um five years later it was it was one i look back on very fondly and de- decent crowds for club games? We did, we did. Um, it's in, in a way, it's almost like the Scottish League where mm. you've got Rangers and Celtic, the, the, the so-called giants, mm. and that's kind of... You've got Kaiser Chiefs, who a lot of people have heard of, Orlando mm. Pirates and Mamelodi Sundowns. They're probably the biggest supported right. clubs in the country. And when you've got the um, Soweto Derby, which is Chiefs v Pirates, you're getting 90,000 sell wow. out. Um, so in terms of numbers at other games, you're probably getting similar to kind of League 2 level... Uh, fans, but then big games, you get in big crowds. We play the cup final against uh, Orlando Pirates, there's 50, 60,000 there. So there are some big games that, that get you very excited. Yeah. And you're back here now, and here you are at Altrincham. Um, you're 33, as you said, you look fit as a fiddle. Physical condition is good. Take yeah, that's 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 key to my game. Yeah. Um, that's something that I work very very hard on. Um, my fitness is is and my energy is everything. Um, so once once that goes, then um, then yeah, you either got to reinvent yourself or <laughs> or call it a day. So yeah. yeah, that's that's very very important to my game, and and uh, hopefully I can showcase that to to at Altrincham. And you're not ready to call it a day yet. Do you? I mean, no, it's 33, just still have goals and I st- targets. And I still feel great. I still feel great. I still want to. I still want to carry on. I want to enjoy my football. I want to play uh, in the team where where I'm valued. Um, but obviously, to be valued, you've you've got to put in the performances, and you, you've got to make yourself uh, a big part of the team. And and um, I will be trying to to give everything to make sure that that I get myself in that position. Last question: How much do you know about the national league, which is new to you, I guess? Yeah, it's going to be new to me. It's it, it's going to be different. Um, but from what I've seen so far, um, I'm really, really impressed with, with the level, um, with the standard of players, with the standard of training. Um, I know the, the lads have gone and got a fantastic result to start the season on the weekend and, and definitely looking around the squad. I'm very, very impressed with what I've seen. Great stuff, Dee. Thanks so much for your time and wish you a very happy and successful time in Aldringham. Thank you very much.